I'm Elliot Bambra. Are you Mother Nature in disguise? Everyone was saying, like, I've got to go and see this tree. I guess you could call me a tree lover. And I first saw the trees! I love their history, their science. It's like seeing nature's Mona Lisa for the first time. And the emotional connection people have with them. Let's go. And I just started crying. To a tree that survived so much, it really hits you. That's why I'm traveling the country in search oh of these God. remarkable tree stories. I just arrived in San Diego and I had to make my way to Balboa Park. You can see around me, it's a gathering spot, it's a hub, there's so much to do here. This campus has museums, there's a zoo, and also there were 16,000 trees planted here. Yep, you heard me right, 16,000 trees in Balboa Park. And there is one in particular that I'm dying to check out. I'd like to introduce you to Leo, the Morton Bay Fig. This massive beauty is one of the three largest of its species in California. No one can quite pinpoint why it's named Leo, although one story suggests the tree was given the kingly name by a Polish tourist. But we can pinpoint when its story began. This Morton Bay Fig was planted as a small tree in a garden as part of the 1915 Panama California Exposition. And from those humble beginnings, huh, boy, has it grown. In 1996, it was measured at 78 feet tall with a crown width of 123 feet and a trunk girth of a staggering 486 inches. That's more than 40 feet around. So Leslie here is one of the first people I ran into in the park and one of the first people to wish me a good morning and ask me how I was. Clearly someone who likes, uh, likes to, to have a human connection and a, a tree connection because you tell me you come here pretty much every single day. Just about every day, yeah. Why is that? What, what is it about this, this tree and this spot? Well, so this tree's been here for more than 100 years and my mom was at this park when she was two when it opened up when they first built it. So there's always been that kind of familial thing. My kids climbed this tree, I climbed on this tree, my husband has climbed on this tree. It's a, it's a shared space, and I love that, that your family has grown up with this tree. Like you said, your mother was here. As I met more and more visitors, that message of generational connections became a consistent theme. It seems everyone has special memories of this particular tree. I understand that this is something you want to do with your kids because you used to come here as a child yourself. So tell me about your experiences here with, with this wonderful tree. So you'd go to the Natural History Museum, lunches would be right under the tree, and then right after lunch you'd go and climb it. You were at, at the time where there was no fencing around here, you got to no interact fence. with it. So what was, what was that like? Do, do you remember the kind of feelings you had about that? I think we were definitely all impressed by the tree. Yeah. I can't, you know, I mean, there was a little bit of a healthy, I think a healthy respect for it, honestly. Um, being able to interact with something that big so and being so little, I think everyone respected it. Respect. That was another important word that was spoken over and over again. Of course, we know that trees are vital to a healthy planet, but respect for this tree seems to run deeper. If you had any doubt about Leslie, uh, Leslie's love for this tree uh, and her respect for it, uh, Leslie is married. Your husband is here today. What, Leslie, what is your husband doing? Picking up litter. <laughs> does your husband work for the park district? He does not. Okay, so he's here in his free time picking up litter around the tree. He works for the tree. So this is Jamie. Jamie is Leslie's husband. What is it that you love about this tree? What, what does it do for you? What is it about this tree that's so special? I respect what it does and provides for us. I mean, you can't help but walk by and just go, Dang, that's impressive. It's so an incredible it's profound. trait. Yeah. It's prof it has a profound impact on people. There's something about this encapsulation of nature in this tree where I literally come and breathe with the tree. 
because it's a, it's a reciprocity that we don't pay attention to in life. By preserving this, they're preserving themselves. Those are wise words. Are you Mother Nature in disguise? I knew it. <laughs> One of the first things you notice when you see this Morton Bay fig are what you might think are roots. But they are in actuality extensions of the trunk that provide lateral stability for the tree. One of the things that's difficult to comprehend, and bearing in mind I'm standing right in front of the tree right now, is its natural size. It doesn't feel real. It feels like some kind of sculpture. The way the tree branches out and the trunks weave around in the ground doesn't feel natural, although it completely is. It's, it's surreal to be standing next to it. Morton Bay fig trees were first planted in California in 1859 and have a life expectancy of over 150 years. When grown in the wild, the Morton Bay fig tree can become as wide as 150 feet. This strangler fig is one of 900 species in the genus Ficus. The botanical species name, Macrophilius, comes from two Greek words, macro, meaning large, and philion, meaning leaf. But is it possible to love a tree too much? Generations of families climbed and played on this iconic tree, creating memories with the best of intentions. But that interaction started to take its toll on our lovely Leo. That's when the Friends of Balboa Park stepped in to create a viewing platform to protect our tree while still allowing families to experience its emotional impact. I think so generations can enjoy it. You know, it, it's, it'd be great if, I could, if we could climb it, but essentially I can still bring my kid here. Right. You know, I can still say, Mama used to climb that tree. So it's just that kind of keeping generation, you know, who knows if, if we can preserve it, maybe he can bring his kids. The thing I love about hanging around with Leo here behind me is in contrast to some of the other trees we've visited, this really does have a circle of life type feel. There's people milling around, there's mothers with their young children in strollers, there's uh, some more senior citizens here who are enjoying the, the company of the tree. It really sits as a center in Balboa Park. I'm excited by the passion and possibility that trees bring to the community. Let's continue to take care of Leo so the next generation can sit here, breathe in, and reflect on the power of a single tree. Well, I'm going to spend the rest of the day getting lost in San Diego's incredible Balboa Park. And while I do, I want to hear more about your favorite trees. Share them with me, and maybe I can visit them next. Hashtag tree stories. All right, where's that history museum gone? Oh, it's over there. Healthy trees increase in value with age. They increase property values, beautify communities, purify air, and save energy by providing shade from summer's heat and protection from winter's wind. Properly cared for, the trees we plant today could live for hundreds and hundreds of years. And of course, have their own stories to tell. And then fate, nature, spirit, whoever, puts people like you into my life so we can help spread that kind of philosophy a little further.